This is the, uh, the meeting of the Board of Assessors on Wednesday, January 11th, 2023. We did not have a meeting last week because two members were out sick. And so we added this meeting to help fill in our regular schedule. Uh, first order of business is to review the minutes from our December 21st meeting. And everyone has a copy of them. I'll start a question. You've got the application number, but I'm not sure which one it's referring to by just the number. Okay. Well, we try. Are you referring to the abatements? Uh, yes. We try not to put people's names and addresses on that. I so. understand. I, I gather that, but yeah. I'm not quite sure which one we're referring to. Is that our all our meetings? Yes. But we didn't. Oh, that's upcoming. Oh, here it is. Next meeting. Well, we didn't put anything in the meetings about what we were talking about as a conflict of interest. Do I see anything like that? No, oh, I didn't read this page. Oh, this one over here. Hey, Russ, want to see what I got the other day? <laughs> I got a new grandbaby Monday night, <laughs> number five. <laughs> totally off topic. <laughs> okay. Have we a motion? Gurney. Uh, yeah, <laughs> second. Okay, to, to accept as read. Okay, yeah. so moved, seconded. Any further discussion? Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, accepted as read. Okay. Uh, How are we sign the sending a motion? You can um. Let's see, I'll I'll sign one and send it on to you. How's that? And then you can send it on to Russ. Okay. And then Russ, you can just stack them at the end of your table. I had to pull back some to make room for cords to reach and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> That's going to be the fun part tonight. <laughs> Sending papers flying. Okay, recent sales, new listings, and new permits. We have the list of December sales. There were three that were essentially within families, you know, the $1 convenience sales. The one that uh, was a transfer of ownership was the post office. Oh, that went through. 
it did go through, yes, at the end of December. Um, and it was to a company that is in the business of owning post and operating post offices. And so, $60,000. Yeah. 60, I had talked to the man because he had some questions about the property and the fellow at the post office holding company and I were talking and he said, boy, the figure we're coming in with is way lower than your figure, which was 138, I think. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. And I said, well, I guess we'll just have to wait and see, you know, it's valued according to what it is, our land schedule and what it is. And uh, what's that one? The, the post, post office. office. Uh, yeah. And well, he knew when I talked to him on the phone, he knew that it was, it was, it, as you had said, more of a, they're just trying to get rid of it. Yes. They want rid of all the property yeah. here. Yeah. So <laughs> we'll see what the sale of verification form comes back with, but uh, that's going to be an interesting one to categorize. I, I'd be anxious to see. We have the other three deeds as well. And we have a copy of the listing for the other St. Peter's properties, the two houses on Schoolhouse mm -hmm. Drive, mm -hmm. which are on the market now for $250,000 together. They have just over two acres. And it says, and it shows in the pictures in the ad that one of the houses is going to need a great deal of work. We're going to need to look at that in our valuation records, certainly. And, uh, you know, they says it's, it's a lot of cleanup to be done that'll be on the burden of the buyer. What do we have it at that? And we have it at 314. But that's for two buildings. Two that's building and two, two, two buildings and two acres. They're, they're, they're selling it for two together. For yes. Yeah, but it's the same as like with the post office. They're selling it for a fraction of what the value is because it's the heirs of somebody and they just want it's rid the of the property. Settled. But it's still, if it's putting it out on the market, that uh, would be... Um, no, it, it's... Part, part of the determination of a fair market sale is the reason why it's being sold. Also, is how long it, it's out on the mar fair market value. So I think you have to take also that. Also, how long it's out there on the market, yes. But if the reason is that if there's any urgency on, on the seller's part, for whatever reason to sell, maybe because of other financial matters, maybe in order to settle an estate, I believe this one may have gone to court and is in a situation being partitioned. And so the court is urging them, in that case, if the court says you're going to sell and, mm -hmm. and so forth, that that takes away from an arm's length sale and it no longer is. Yeah, so I'll send these around. Oops, sorry, I won't send them the next time. We have only one motor vehicle at place. Statement. The end of the year ones usually are fairly small amounts, but uh, they're equally valid. And we have all the all of the uh, paperwork that we needed to. They kept the plate and put it on the new vehicle. Car was. Uh, yep. Yep. There we go. Oh. Signing. No. Oh, initially, you're seeing them. Oh, you are making the initial. You can always go back and read them more carefully if you'd like, but you know, this way we know that we've had a look at them, a brief look at least. And they're aware of the sales and in the permits, there's nothing big. No, I was gonna say it's mostly weatherization. Weatherization, um, yes. A couple wiring replacements, yep. you know, little wiring. Yeah. 
I think that hair ceiling and weatherization. Yeah, I think That's one of them there. is making a bath, you know, adjusting a bathroom for handicap, you know, making yeah. it more handicap accessible, but nothing right. big in that either. No, it's more just the fixtures. Yeah. yeah. They're pretty easy. It's a quiet moment. Mm hmm. For that type of activity. Okay, so this uh, motor vehicle excise is for two months, um, abatement for two months out of the year 2022. The original bill was $77.25, so we'd be granting an abatement of $12.88 based on the fact that the car was graded. May I have a motion to grant? I'll make a motion. Second? Second? Okay. Right. Aye. Any further <laughs> discussion? Anything? No? Okay, all in favor? Aye. Okay. And we have the summary to sign as well. There's three. Yep. Three places. On yep. The Certificate, summary, and application. The town's big uh, motor vehicle excise bill. Big, sorry, <laughs> will be coming in at the end of the month. Probably mailed out the end of January, first of February. That's always about eighteen hundred and fifty bills. Yep. So it gives us lively February and March. And what's that for? That is the annual uh, mailing of most of the. A motor vehicle excise bills. Oh, okay. all the standard ones. Oh, so they could have just been piled up on the other side. No. Oh, these that were not. Yeah, they're still outstanding. Yeah, they were not doing. Okay. Right. Right. Okay. That takes that off the list. Right. Good. Oh, there was Okay. The one of the application that we have to work on tonight is the N star. And I had talked with Roy Bishop about, uh, written to him, I should say, about whether we should deny this one or let it run and be deemed denied. And he said, just deny it. And he said, you know, they're going to appeal. 
um, to the ATB is on a statewide basis. And so he said, just deny it. That's what all the towns are doing. It's what we do every year, isn't it? Pretty much. Pretty much for them and Verizon. If if they're having those, you know, big class action suits. Yeah. So um so do you know if the other towns have denied it for sure or no? Most of them have, yes. Basically, no one's going to grant it because no one's going to agree with their calculate their figures. Mm -hmm. uh, Roy used the method that is acceptable to the State Department of Revenue and therefore will be passed as far as allowing us to mail taxes and get a tax rate and so forth. Understand. And it's built, it's a method that is built on that particular industry and its returns and its expenses. And this I understand, but we're, yeah. take, we're taking his advice in the town. If it's for some reason we don't go through the lawsuit and we it doesn't win, we're liable for all that. We're liable for and it could be a possible abatement of the amount between yeah, what is the amount for? They have made their fall payment, by the way, of $157,227.90. So they get billed about $300,000 for the year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, if their value came in at, say, two fifty, dollars we won an appeal, we would owe them an abatement on the $50,000 difference between two fifty dollars and three hundred. dollars mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Plus probably interest and everything else on that. Probably. Yeah, happened before. That's they, why we have the overlay. They apply for this every year, though, right? They, and every almost, year they're denied, and every year it goes to the ATB, and yep. every year they lose. <laughs> so, uh, since this is a, a big part of his regular business, and he uh, has done it for years and in many towns, I personally feel very confident in, in relying on his advice. Um, and I would move to accept his advice and to deny it. Do we have any further discussion and questions? Well, I'm just wondering. I just, because we're responsible for all that. I mean, I don't think we should have given the abatement, but is there any other way besides just denying it to wait and see what happens or what? No, you can't. No. You can't. no. Okay, I guess we deny it. Yeah. Okay. All in favor of denying NSTAR's application for abatement on their personal property? Aye. 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 Thank you. I don't, I don't have a copy of the minutes. Is there a copy of our minutes? I put four, three copies in it the was, folder. Oh, it is. I, I put. Yeah, I was going to say I put copies for everyone in there. Yeah, I didn't get one. I gave you a copy. I thought. Yeah. Here you go. Did you get one left? No, I'll say maybe you might have sent it over there after you read it. Well, no. Um, sorry, not the minutes. The agenda. Oh, the agenda? Yeah. And oh, I put okay. three of those in there too. Did I not get that? No, Lee's hogging them. Yeah, I am. Oh, yes. Okay. Okay. You I said one along You said these gave me this too. I'm not sure what that one is. You have to sign the. the you have to sign the back of the abatement. Oh, okay. Yeah. And if you'll send that along with its uh, cellophane sleeve. Oh, okay. If we're not reviewing the permits, I'll take them. Oh, I forgot to send them around. I'm sorry. Building permits, I forgot to send them around. Oh, I need that. Yes.
many people are bearing a lot of 42 solar panels. Yes, solar and, and insulation, motorization are the big ones, yes. Yep, continue to be. Will the SRX run out this year or next year? So there's an incentive. There was an incentive to get them in installed in 22. And uh, I expect the state will look for some kind of new programs to keep it going. Oh, oh here it is. Oh, here it is. Do we have a duplicate here? Like, is that what the difference? No. Um, Which is it? McCarthy? Could be probably a duplicate. It looks like it's a duplicate. I don't see anything different. Okay. Been a busy place. <laughs> and somehow, you know, Interruptions never happen here at the end of one little job and getting ready to start the next one. It's always dirty. Okay. Uh, Ken, here's another one. What the heck is the difference on this one? Nine. What's it do? So this one says 2020. I mean, yeah, 2020. I'm confused at what I'm looking at. Can I ask it again? Oh. And this one is for 23. So there's two of them here. You may need it. Now we have a look. There's three of them. All right. If there's three, then they have it in their system three times. <laughs> okay. This one is for demolishing the uh, bathroom and changing room and so forth. Mm -hmm. They done a lot of demolition work in there in order to rebuild for mm -hmm. better ADA um, accessibility. This one is for the new work to be done after the demolition. Yep, this is to construct. Okay. Yep. And then this one is simply the uh, electrical permit that goes with these two. Oh, okay. Yep. So the, I didn't see where it said that. Right. Okay. Well, up here, uh, application to construct. Um, okay. Uh, uh, demolish and construct. Yeah. And then this uh, E up here on the permit number yeah. indicates electrical. Oh, because it says. So, so location is the bathroom remodeling. Yeah. Okay. Good. 
I haven't finished the construction completion memo to property owners. It'll be done for next week. What would you put it on there for? I thought I'd have it finished. <laughs> it's going to have to wait. Okay, so we're tabling that. We're tabling that item. <laughs> yes. Put her on hold. Next is review the annual letter to exempt property owners. Mm -hmm. These are thing uh, owners like agencies, um, the sportsmen's club, the swimming pool, churches, uh, religious groups who own property in Conway that is exempt from taxation. Every year they have to file their 380C with us in the middle winter. It's due back by March 1st. That documents their circumstances and we review that in order to grant the exempt status for, in this case, fiscal year 2024. So since that goes out over the signature of all three, it's here to be reviewed. Um, no, because I need to photocopy it. To <laughs> so please don't. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, though, you, Russ. Okay, fine. Okay, great. Thank you. We'll get those right out. Uh, next item is oops. You do additional. Uh, with regard to Roxy's project um, of promoting owner use and, and education and uh, transparency through having information on property record cards online on our website, uh, come up with descriptions for all the different boxes, explanations for all the different boxes and codes used on the property record card. The basic descriptions are all ready and here. Uh, there's going to have to be a few pages of appendix that add more detailed lists where they can't be fit. But I now have paragraphs ready for each blue segment, and each one will be done on its own page. Uh, and so, that as someone's sitting, you know, with their property record card, it'll say, "Okay, look at this one." And they can look at that one and look what the information on here will talk about this one alone. And then this segment next, next and things like that. So um, I think this is slightly more up to date than what I sent you this afternoon, Roxy. Oh, okay. What I'd like to do is to have okay. everybody get together and cut and paste and put it together. Mm -hmm. Well, but if you prefer to read those through first and well, so you want me to read through this right now? And just... Oh, no, 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 oh. no, no, no. So just edits, you know, where it needs more information or less or mm -hmm. whatever you suggest. And then we'll. Can I out. get a copy of this one then? You can have that. Oh, okay. Good. Sure. Yeah. So, um, well, shouldn't Russ and the three of us get together and do that? Because it's all about what's on the property card and what's what everything means, or no? How do you feel about that, Russ? Have a look at some of them. Yeah, I gave all that to Adam, but I mean, I, you know, what you're trying to do is explain it to right the homeowner in plain language. I, I looked at that one real quickly because I didn't get it. Um, yeah. 
too much and then I did have some questions on uh, when, on a lot of the property cards there's you're listing with the um, the functional value I don't even think you put that on the property card mm -hmm. functional deduction depreciation no. occasionally yes market adjustment we don't use market adjustments right we occasionally use a functional deduction depreciation and we occasionally use an economic depreciation so i guess i'm under, I, i'm questioning if you only use it occasionally mm -hmm. Because your description is today's buyers would expect a second bath. Yes, it is. Twenty four hundred, right? Twenty four hundred square feet, four bedrooms, two stories was what I used as an example with one bathroom upstairs. That's it. Mm -hmm. And so today's market would expect at least a second full bath. So not having that is a functional pre obsolescence. Okay. Well, anyways, I can look at the show there. Okay. Have a chance. Do you want to read it? Sorry. Go ahead. We'll keep going. Okay. okay. Uh, another thing I found back in August, we had said we were going to review what we have as frequently asked questions on the website. And I found the old ones, and a lot of them still stand up very nicely mm -hmm. and simply need to be edited to today's uh, dates and so forth. And we, I also found a list of additional questions that we came up with. And so I thought it would be good to read through the ones we had, see if there are any others that come to mind that people have asked you perhaps, one of us, mm -hmm. um, and any other questions that they might have asked that uh, could be answered well here under frequently asked questions. Um, a couple of them are, how is the tax rate set? I mean, it's how the word is always set, as if we determine a tax rate and then somehow get to it, and that's not it at all. But uh, why do I get more than one real estate bill at a time? What is the CP listed on my bill, the community preservation? Um, I tore down a bill at a barn in April of the last year. Why was it still on last September's bill in April, this April's bill? A year after it's gone. Uh, what was there the effective date of assessment for that fiscal year? Um, I paid $3,500 for my car when I bought it from a used car dealer in Greenfield. How come it's valued at $5,000 on the excise bill? Uh, what are exemptions and how does one qualify for one? Can I look at my neighbor's valuations? Why is the former owner's name still on my bill? They sold it to me a year ago. Mm -hmm. Things like this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I think I and a lot of those questions could be in a lot of people if they watch the Zoom could be answered that a lot of those questions. Some of them can be answered in that with yeah. regard to the property record card. Most right. a lot of them do not uh wouldn't apply to the property record card, but would be good in the frequently asked question. Yep. yep. So I I and ask you be, and that is going to be put on on the website. Website, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Because you have it in, a, you gave it to me when I first came in on in the paper form. Yeah. All those questions. Right. Oh, okay. Good. You have that then? I do have that. Good. Good. And I can give you another copy of the, the just the little list of questions there. Mm -hmm. And uh, it would be super if you two, I'll be going over it too. And if you could give it some consideration and, and time. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't have a chance to look this over completely. So, are we approving this? No, 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 no. I'm just bringing it up tonight. Oh, okay. To be approved at another meeting when we've had a um, full chance to go over it and edit and. Great. Can add. I get copies of this or yes. send it as an email? I don't care. Sure. No, we'll, we'll do a photocopy.
Do we have a, now what would be do we have a list of uh the new growth for this year? Yes. Um these are most of the properties which will be supplying us with the new growth. There may be a few more out there. But this is the list of places we need, places we need to visit for new growth. Yes. Well, it can't. Well, wasn't that supposed to be done by January 1st? We can, we we can try. We can also go and say if it was in process of being built. Yeah, when we were supposed what to was it, what was its condition on January 1st? I don't think that's what we were supposed to do. We're supposed to go out and assess it. But we couldn't get there for whatever reasons. And therefore, we certainly can ask them what was the condition on January 1. We're well, only 11 days away from that. Huh? We're only 11 days away from January 1. It isn't like we're asking in March. What was the condition three months we're ago? We're past January 1. Yes. That's why we ask, what was the condition of this house on January 1? But isn't that our job as assessors to go out and assess that? We do it before the 1st of January when we can, yes. When we were, why can't we get that done? Why, why isn't that part of our job in getting it done? We've had some difficulty getting us all together for site visits. There's been illness. There have been that's after. So you don't no, wait until December thirtieth. You don't wait until December thirtieth to go do it. But sure you if do. you do it ahead of time on December fifteenth, they can have two more weeks of work done by January first. So you do it on or as soon as you can after January first. So instead of going out and inspecting it. You're just saying, asking people what they had done. Just in a very, very few, less than a handful of cases where the house is actually in under construction with things happening. No, right. she's, you're still you're still saying you're going to inspect oh, it, but you're going to ask yes. them, okay, how much have you done in the past week? Right. That's not what I'm saying. By the state guidelines, we are supposed to be having it assessed by January 1st, and that's what goes ahead. January 1st is the effective date of assessment. Yes. So don't we go yeah. by those state guidelines? Of course. And January 1st is our effective date of assessment. We just come by the information a little differently occasionally. Well, uh, many of the cases were fully completed. The state guidelines is to go by it occasionally the way you feel like it. I think we may have that. I just think we start, we should be going by. So on government. January 1st, you're going to go assess the property. No, it just needs to be done by January 1st. It doesn't but then, say. But then there may be more work that they do before January 1st well, that we won't have listed. Oh, well, that's fine. But no, it isn't because then we're not giving the, the value as of January 1. Well, then you're not giving it at all because it wasn't assessed by January 1. We are able to find the condition of the house and determine the value on January 1. And how are you going to do that? Most of these were already completed before January 1. So that's they, easy enough. So we go look at them so now. Were they assessed by January 1? No. We're going out now to look at them. Would a garage have changed significantly? No, I'd like to. I'd like to you to show me that exact phrase uh, where it says it has to be done by January one. Yes. Okay, I got it. Wait, what a bit of information! Just because I just finished the course, there's a whole lot of information mm -hmm. about that. There's a whole chapter I'm almost about that. And the assessments. First thing on chapter 21. Yep. Property taxes in Massachusetts are assessed as of January 1. Yes, I just said that. Right. So that is what our job is to do to have them assessed by January 1. Is that what that says? Are you quoting? Well, this is our, you can read it. I will read it. Property taxes in Massachusetts, this is verbatim, are assessed as of January 1. Liability and the basis for the tax rate are fixed as of that date. That, this date fixes tax liability for the entire fiscal year. That liability is not affected by later changes in the property's ownership or valuation. 
it doesn't say anything here about the site visits to determine the condition of the property. So asking someone in the down here, section 1.2, paragraph one. Tax assessors must identify and inventory all the physical property and real estate. Mm -hmm. I added that that exists on January 1 and is taxable for the year. Uh, oh no, sorry, that's the chapter 653, which we do have on ongoing projects. Um, I want to read the parcel. Okay, where's the next page for this? Page 1.3. Yeah. Okay. See if it says anything there about site visits and inspections. Well, I'm just saying that if, we, if we're doing assessments, you have to do a site visit on a new property to see what it is. Yes. And it's not done. So we can right. not do an put that as new growth. Yeah. I think everything that has been done is new growth. But we haven't assessed yet. We will be. Not January after January. Proxy. The process is to go out, find out what was there as of January 1 and assess that for the next year as new growth. If it was a foundation, then all we get in new growth is a foundation. If it's a house that's framed up and covered over, then that's what we get for new growth value. And we get more the next year. It's each January 1 during the, the construction period of the building. You don't wait till it's finished, but you do no, it. But I'm reading all this as of January thing, 1. It has to be assessed and it has to be documented by January 1. Right. This is, why we, this is why we talk to the owner and say, okay, what was the condition of this property? Has it been done by on January, January 1? Has it been done? Has That's it, what, exactly what we ask. But have we even done that for January 1? I'm trying to go out tomorrow or Friday. This is what's going to be the 12th or 14th. That's not. I had COVID last week. Sorry. I don't see <laughs> that we're following the state guidelines in this, in doing this. I believe you are mistaken. Okay. Well, we will check on that with the state. Oh, you go right ahead. You can get hold of Lauren Aldrich. She's our local advisor or anyone whom you'd like. Because I believe we're not, and I'd like to see what you or what you're going to actually ask them. The wording of it is: Does this? We don't. Do you have even a property card with that information at all made up? With what information? On these new sites. Um, yes, I mean the ones that I there there that we we were trying to get to a couple of weeks ago. They already have the drawings in based on the uh, building plans. And one of the things we have to ask is, was this house built according to the plans? Okay. And if not, then we change that. And we go in and we see how much is done. Is it just rough plumbing or wiring and so forth? Then we have our percentage sheet so why that we look at to I determine that the that percentage is complete. Board. Why isn't this done on time and appropriated with um, the guidelines, state guidelines? State guidelines are going to say it has to be done Specifically, January first. No, you know, not on it's, January first day. It has to be done by January first. No, it doesn't say that. Does not because you don't. If you the if valuation you December first, you wouldn't know what they completed by January. The, the, the taxable value. So if is you go there by what January was there, yeah. that means you can uh, know what it's done by January first. Yes. Yeah, we you ask them what percentage, and then we go by the books. Well, we say, did you have your rough plumbing in? No, they haven't started that yet. Okay, so we don't count rough plumbing, even though something that's in today on the 11th. Things like that. But that is our job to go and assess it and yes. just do that. And that's why we have this great list and keep trying to get out. We only went out once that I know of. Before just before Christmas. Yes, yeah, once. Mm -hmm. And you were doing abatements and not, which didn't have to be done, but you should have been hitting these uh, 
houses that need to be assessed before January 1. That was 10 days before December 31st. And I don't December think that much work would have been done in 10 days. Before On a January. house like the Smith House down at the corner of Hoosick, they could accomplish a lot in 10 days. Lee, if, if I can ask a question. Please. Obviously, there has to be a deadline every year. Yes. So correct me if I'm wrong, January 1st is the deadline. And not a deadline. It is. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Sorry. I said that wrong. As of, as of. So, so when you assess, it it is as of January 1st. So in fact, you can't assess before January 1st because that's not telling you the condition as of. Precisely. Okay. Thank you. Just want to make sure I understood that. Sorry for the wrong it's word. It's not a deadline. It is the assessment, the effective date of assessment. And that means that we value the property as of January 1st and whatever its condition was then. We can find that deter that condition at any date after January 1st, and we try and do it as as soon as reasonably can. Okay. okay. Well, I will check on that also. To... So in other words, if if there was work that was done, I'm just trying to get this straight in my head too. And obviously you guys are doing things on time and all that, but if things were done after January 1st, that does not count, correct? Work that was done after January 1st does not count on the bill coming right. up in September. That's right. right. So you have to wait until December before you can even say what the condition is on January 1st. Well, we have to wait till after January or January yeah. 1st or after. Exactly, exactly. Yes. The other meeting you were saying you're knocking on doors in December 30th or 31st so we can get it assessed on time. Well, we used to try and do that, yeah. Figuring the 31st is pretty close to January 1st. Right. Yes. So in the way you're saying it though, we can do in um, February, March, as long as you say, well, this is done in as of January. Is if that it had saying? to be that late, it could be, yes. Okay. Well, we certainly aspire to have anything that's in a state of change get done at the earliest after January 1 so that we can have the best knowledge and, rec and recollection from the owner as to what was there 10 days ago when they had their New Year's Day party or something, or, you know, whatever. All right. Okay. Uh, so scheduling site visits. People do like several days of notice ahead of time. We could go out this week. It's already Wednesday night. We certainly could look at garages and things like that uh, that have been done. Double check the, you know, there's a new barn at one property, new garages, screen porch, all these types of things. We can look at them that are probably finished and then try and get appointments for next week to see the houses that are under construction. And then um, when I call folks for appointments, explain to them, could they please jot down for a minute, you know, sit down and jot down what it was like on January 1, what things had not been done. And that's the list we get from them. And based on that, we look at our chart and we determine the amount of the percentage complete of the house as it was on January 1. And that's the basis for the bill in September and next April. Yeah. And then next winter, we go out again if it's unfinished. Okay. Any more on that? No. Okay. Um, Roxy, you want to dis discuss detached versus attached? Yes, I still have a question as to why some are being considered detached and attached garages. 
Okay, we've gone over this a number of times in our meetings. Yep, and we haven't really come to some conclusion. I don't know we have. I think you haven't agreed with it necessarily, but we certainly know what we're talking about. Yeah. One example. So, is it? Are you just doing it an attached? I don't know how you can assess a building as detached when it is attached clearly okay, and it has so a shared wall and you are which is valued higher as detached and you are the value of a detached garage is higher than attached correct i'd have to look at specific examples no in general it depends on whether it's the same construction as the house the same age, all I kinds of things. When, the same when, we are, when we are mass appraising, yes, it's just put in as an attached garage. I don't see where there's a, a consideration in anything that I've seen where an attached garage is is um, has a different condition than the house or a different grade than the house. Am I right? If we get there and find that it has a different condition and a different grade from the house, we can make the step of calling it a detached in order to correctly value it according to its actual grade and condition, separate from the house. Another good example, one of good example of that is these older houses in town that had a one or two story barn built on the back. It was built right onto the back of the house but it was just stick built, open joists, open uh, timbers up overhead, probably a dirt floor, maybe a door, maybe it's a little attic storage up overhead, never was heated, maybe has one light bulb in it. The house is very pleasant to live in, very comfortable, was built to better de demands, to de requirements to start with, it was built as a residence and it was finished and it's been maintained much, much better than the back building. Well, that building, there's no way that can be calculated under the same calculations as the house is. Even though it happens to be stuck to it, it would be wrong because it would way overvalue that structure, that back barn, that shed. So if we call it a detached, do the same dimensions, we can call it the grade that it was, the design and the materials and the workmanship at time of construction. We can say that this is a, an effective age of minimum of 75 years, if not 100, we have to look at that. And we can say the condition is part of a fair compared to the house or fair compared to itself. And that's why we use, occasionally use detach for something that is not actually a separate a structure separated by space. So what do you do if someone, and you said we lose assessment value when an older house, a garage is attached to an older house because you have to have it depreciated to the older home. Well, the value doesn't exist. What do you mean the value doesn't exist? We don't lose value because the value in that barn well, does not exist. There's no more value than what's there and it's a W old falling down bar. But you assess it as an attached. So it is no the, if it's a W falling down old barn that happens I to be speak. I didn't say that. I said if you have a new garage, yes, and they attach it to an old house, older home, and then you call it a attached garage, it is depreciated to that home. Am I right? I don't think of any examples I've ever seen, but I think I would want to do it as a detached because it's so much newer. And leave it with its own age and condition and grade. Well, do you want me to bring up an example? Sure. Well, okay. I got, I got, I have came in yesterday afternoon. And she asked me for about, I don't know, 25 or 30 property record cards. Yeah. 
So let me get something here. Um, well, I'm looking. Do, were you able to get the codes for me and the descriptions? I think you have all of them. That we're going to be putting on the property record card site? Yeah. I asked you for that, and you said you were working on them. Yes, but when I look at what you have there, it looks like all the pages that I'd be looking for. When we get together, we'll sort that out. If there are any more to be found, we'll either find them or make them. Mm -hmm. Pardon me? I said we'll either find them or I'll make them, create them. Create the list from the oh. data. Okay. I've been asking for those for several Well, months. codes and descriptions, as you can see, can describe many, many different batches of information. And that's the point of writing it down so people know what the descriptions are. Yes. And some of it is already in there in the program, and we'll see what other needs to be added to it as appendix information. So, but why can't I get that information? That's what I've been waiting to get. I don't know which codes and descriptions you're asking for that I haven't already given you. You haven't given me any. Tell me what code you have there. What? In your in your papers, you were just I could just see some as you were going through. I could see the back. Oh, well, of some pages that were those lists. Mm -hmm. Well, let's well let's it. go back to the garage. Okay. Stay on one topic until we. Okay, so look at this one. And I've got some other ones. And so how can you take an old garage or whatever the equipment says and put a date on it at 1960? An effective age? No. Or an year, estimated, estimated age. A year built. Okay, that's you probably an estimation. You what? Probably an estimation. And the house is built in, of course, this is the same one I'm arguing about, but I it just doesn't make sense to me. Okay, this is the house across the street. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's not actually grew up. Didn't we didn't we talk about this house about a month ago? No, we just did, we did I'm just we asking about it. Yep. Okay. Yeah, we did. <laughs> but that's okay. Lori is an important part of this group. And we our colleagues. And we need to treat each other professionally, courteously, and with respect mm -hmm. at all times. Mm -hmm. And not point fingers and say, you be quiet. That type of thing will not be tolerated. Okay, on the back of this one, across the street. That's an effective year for outbuildings. You yeah. give it an effective year. It doesn't have a year. It says year built, but it's the effective year. Okay. Well, it says so calling that a 60 plus year old barn. Well, it was probably built 18, 18 whatever. And well, if it was, we'll correct it. We'll see if we can get some proof of when it was built. We'd have to see something on an old map or something. Um, okay. In this particular case, here's another one. This garage. Here's another one you got detached. And here's another yeah, one. this is one of those old, old barn sheds on the back of a house that's been kept so what do you have and maintained. Year? What do you have the year on that? So I, I guess I don't understand. 1870, this. you're built. Yeah, 1870. That's mm -hmm. been there forever too. Yeah. So that just means if you're assessing Maybe it. Maybe the other one should be 18, 18, whatever. But the value to at a detached garage is much higher, or the assessment value of a detached garage is higher than an attached. Correct? I don't know that that's the case. If well, I had two identical garages, one was detached, one was attached, 
and they were attached to a, a house that's the same grade, age, effective age, and so forth condition, mm -hmm. I'd have to see and compare those two circumstances. In this particular case, a garage, new garage, new construction was added mm -hmm. to a house that had been completely and totally gutted and rebuilt. Correct. So the effective age on the house is six, seven years. Yeah. In which case the effective age on the garage is the same. Because they're both extremely new. Well, see, I don't have prices on a detached garage. Or you said I had all the codes and all the prices. And Not I don't have a few. All right. So it would be. Um, um, okay, so we'll just go for this. If you have a garage here that is attached. Yeah. Uh, and these are all average, correct? I don't know. I don't know what you're looking at. I don't okay, know. These are the codes and these are the average prices on these, correct? I believe that first column is yes. Okay. So if I'm reading this correctly, an attached garage is $13 a square foot. It begins at that, or that would be the average price, yes. Okay. Of average condition. So I'm average looking rate. at property cards where an average garage, which is detached. Yeah is let me give you a price per square foot um oh i didn't write that one down i didn't figure out that price per square foot sorry can i ask a legitimate question please if there was a fire in the garage mm -hmm. and the garage had to be rebuilt mm -hmm. would it cost more to rebuild a standalone building than it would to build the attached. I don't know. Depends on what they were. I mean, you know, and in this case, thinking it's it's more walls. All right. So you're we, giving me one that's a figure and one so, that has a description. So we have another one here, six per square foot, mm -hmm. and it's a detached, and it's grade C, which is average. Mm -hmm. Condition is five, which is a little below average. Mm -hmm. And that's twenty-seven dollars a square foot. So I think as built, as built. What do you mean as built? Or, or you mean that's its valuation per square foot? Okay. So that's considerably higher than an average garage that is attached. I think we need to continue this in the office in a work session where we can look in the computer and see how some of these work out exactly. Instead of trying to ask questions on properties, yeah, I had no time to prep for these at all. Mm -hmm. I would have appreciated a list of, I'd like to, I'm going to be comparing, I'd like to be able to compare this one to this one. Could you have a look at them so you have the answers ready? Mm -hmm. That would be much more helpful, I think, at this particular well, and type if, of and if we conversation. Could get this together as average, we could very clearly see. Yes. The, Right. We're keeping in mind that it's there's actually. also a square foot uh, adjustment to that figure, mm -hmm. as well as the, the grade and the condition. Yes. And yep. I, I was comparing same grade, you know, average grade condition, and it's considerably higher for a detached what garage size? compared mm -hmm. to size. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it says square footage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And then it's like, what is considered a detached? I've been looking this up. What do you consider the detached compared to attached? It can be, well, certainly anything that is physically separated from the main structure is detached without question. Mm -hmm. Anything that is such so significantly different in construction, in, in grade, Condition, um, 
use from the main structure that they can't be valued on the same basis is set off as a detached structure in order to be able to correctly value it. Okay. So I just got some description. An attached garage is the one is connected to your home, sharing one wall and think there's direct access into the house. Access. Mm -hmm. Yes. So that, that would be considered. That's a, one description of an attached garage. Okay, and then it is if, a, if, if, well, it is if that happens to be an attached garage. If when we get there, the house is, is 100 years old and the garage was built 20 years ago, we probably are going to detach that garage in order to properly value it. Or if it's the other way around, the house, the, the house is 150 years old and the garage is new or whatever, you know, whatever. If there's a significant difference between the two, in order to correctly, accurately value it, we're going to separate them. So you can separate them when you feel like it. Okay, so no, not when I feel like it. Well, when, when you... we have reason okay. to want to do it in order to correctly value the individual categories of the, that structure. So I have another one, another explanation here that I would like. A detached garage is separated from the house, even if it is attached by a breeze, breezeway with the same roof line, because you physically have to walk out of the garage to the home. An attached garage is attached to the house. You drive into your garage and have access to the house to, to, from the garage. That sounds rather unusual to me because most folks with attached garages do have a breezeway of some or some sort between the house and the garage. You don't step from the garage, open the door, and you're in the house. Well, yes, you are. Most of them, you walk into an entryway or a mudroom yeah. or a breezeway. But the, a those are connecting the house right. to the garage. You have to walk from your garage into the excess access of the house through the garage, not outside and then in. I think I, this I is like that, you know, when people have a screened in porch type thing. Yeah, like I, I don't between. understand that question about having to go. You mean you're talking about having to open up the big door and go outside and close the big door again and then go around to your front door or something? No. I don't understand what you're talking about, Roxy. Because you I do. Uh -huh. I do. My my brother's ex. It, it's you have a garage. Yeah. You have your house. Yeah. In between, you have like a porch. Yeah. A glass in porch. Yeah. You can enter the porch from the garage, and then but then you have another locked door between that porch into your house. Sure, that's the breezeway. But that's right, the but that's that's making it. Right. That's, that's making it so it's house. detached. It's is what you're saying? No, no, no it no. could be either way. They're I, not walking. You're not if you're walking into a sunroom or screen and porch, whatever you're saying. You're not walking outside. Right, but isn't that what you just said? Red is a detached. No. You're not walking. You have to walk outside. Right. Okay. Reread what you what you read. Okay. A detached garage is a separate from the house, even if it is attached with a breeze with a breezeway with a same roof line. So it's an open breezeway. Yeah. That's not a sunroom. You have to physically walk out of the garage to the home. Okay. So you're walking outside. You're walking outdoors. Yes. You have to walk outdoors. You can't go through the breezeway? Well, the breezeway is... is you're just, saying you're walking outdoors. You're, you're picturing a different breezeway. She's just talking about a sidewalk with a roof over it between the garage and the house. No walls, no nothing. You're thinking like a, a, a patio or screen let's carry, Let's continue this at a work session. This is wasting our, our meeting time. I, I'm glad to go over it more and to try and find well, out... It, it, can you have an attached garage with a walkway? Is that... Attached garage. I mean, just a sidewalk going to it? Yes. No, that's detached. So, what is this one then that I see? That doesn't have an open porch. Ah, what's this? Okay. 
No, the garage is a uh, garage is a separate building. Did you call it attached? Oh, well, yeah, that's right. There is a walkway there. But they were all built at the same time. The entire of the upstairs of the garage is finished off to living conditions equal to the house. But that's a, it's a detached garage. It's built basically as a detached ranch house with a garage underneath it. That garage is. No. Have you been there? Yes. Have you been in that building? I don't need to go into the building. I'm not assessing the building. I'm assessing. This is the house. The garage is over here. I know. So there's a walkway here. So how can it be attached? Maybe it is, and I'll have to go back and look at my photos. Site visit. Okay. Site visit, yeah. Site visit. Site visit, absolutely. Okay. Let's move on. Continue discussion on conflict of interest from last meeting. And you brought this to the agenda? Yes. Would you care to? Well, we discussed how, um, what we were talking about, which we could not discuss, which I brought up about us doing appraisals of our homes. And you were going to check about on it. having an outside appraiser do them. Yeah. And you were going to check on it because I said mm -hmm. it was against the conflict of interest to talk about it or have it done. We couldn't vote on it. I have not yet heard back from the Ethics Commission. So I think that in the interests of not uh, following their guidelines, that we should hold it until we have that response and not have any discussion of it tonight. Okay. Okay, so that's table. The the letter that you received, mm -hmm. you feel is your own personal communication. That's what they said. And however, also, are we How do we know? Are we talking about this again? No, I'm talking about your inquiry to the ethics commission, not the topic of it. Okay. When you made you when you made your inquiry to the ethics commission, we don't know if you wrote a letter or had a phone call. We don't know what you asked them mm -hmm. to clarify, mm -hmm. and you did not read the entirety of that letter to us or allow it to be put into the record, the public record, mm -hmm. even though it's very much a topic of interest to the entire Board of Assessors. Mm -hmm. Consequently, certainly until I hear back from the Ethics Commission, I have very questionable faith in that letter and what it says. But, Let me see no, right not now. right now, please. No, because that could constitute discussing something. Well, I was just going to see if I had the letter. <laughs> well, let's bring it to the next meeting. And by then, hopefully, we'll have an answer. Okay. That would be best, I think, to be able to compare apples to apples. Yeah, I don't even think I have it with me today. Okay. Um, now, there are several other matters, uh, basically, just little things, but. Do either of you have any other business to bring before the board right now? I've got budget, uh, class to take, a couple of things like that, the auditor. I'm not going to because it isn't ready. All right. Okay. Okay, yep, yep, yep. Laurie points out that number nine, Zoom meeting set date was not addressed, but I skipped over it because the uh, pages are not yet ready. Um, Do you think we could set a date? 
I'd like to move along as quickly as possible, but right now it depends partly on when, mostly on when you and I can get together. Could you come in tomorrow afternoon to work on it? Tomorrow? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we have. Okay, good. We'll I thought you wanted to do site visit. How many times? I like to do both. There's so many hours of the day and so many times we can get hold of Russ. What is, do you know what your schedule is going to be for the next couple of weeks? Hey, we'll leave on here the next two weeks. You're gone? Oh, you're here. Yeah. Okay. February, so, I know I've got two weeks or that. Okay, next week is our next scheduled meeting that's on our regular schedule of first and third. So you would be here for that? Yes. Okay. Is it possible that you can be available to go out on some site visits tomorrow, in which case we grab you and go on site visits? And another day when you couldn't be available, Roxy and I could work on this other. Uh, as far as I know, I'm going to be around tomorrow. Okay. Afternoon. Yep, afternoon. I think I've got most of my help back now. Yeah. Well, then I suggest that I try and get some site visits set up for tomorrow afternoon. There'll be mostly exteriors, and then we can talk. If you can look at your calendar, maybe Tuesday of next week. And if that were convenient for you. Um, Tuesday, you? I think so. Well, I don't have my. Right. Well, if you can, you know, if you can check your calendar, then we could set up some. Interior full house visits for them. So, what are you going to do tomorrow? Uh, site visits. Yeah, I know. Uh, but I mean, site visits. I can today. call some people tonight and see if they possibly can have their houses done tomorrow. I'd like to get to the Smith one on Hoosick, and we should be able to get in that one okay because it's only in the process of being built. Um, I would like to get back to Buddy Squires. That big addition. That's a big one. Oh, I'll take a, uh, Owen's house. Owen Wormser. Um, let's see who's that one. Oh, and Rogers and Rice, of course. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you have a do you have that list of what we need to do? Can I get a copy of that? Yes, of course. Okay. Yep. So how, just, I've been looking at these property cards that I pulled, and it's like, um, you want me to say this one? It's the 4040 Road. You yeah, know. that's on our list. Is it? Yes. Okay. Oh, yes. Yeah. Because I see no building for that that was no. listed on this property card. Uh, I haven't seen one any either. What? I haven't seen one either. So you haven't seen we they there we haven't seen any building permits, but the work has been done. Oh, so they're they're doing it without burning uh, building permit. It would seem so. Okay, that's what I'm just wondering. Yeah, we know. don't rely just on building permits to uh, obtain information about what places where things are happening. Mm -hmm. You know, in that case, it's pretty easy to keep your eyes open and see that one changing. Right, and that's one of the methods we use to see what's changing, uh, to drive around or to hear from people. Oh, I saw some work going on or what's going on. But you're still going to check it out and okay. explain to the folks what's going on. Yeah. Because I, I, I don't know your list of what we're supposed to go see. What's right. When you see the list, the numbers on the far left are the neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. So each of these groupings is a particular section of town. That just helps us to Line up of an outing, yeah. And then can I did it? Can I do? Can I ask you about the property card? Because I think a lot of people are going to be confused over this. And what? Uh, what about it? Well, about an individual's own property record card or property record card in general? Uh, whatever this one is. Um, that was your daughter. She's fine. Okay. Call her when you get home. Everything's oh, fine. Thank you. It's about. It's about um, just figuring out, and I think this is going to be have to be addressed, but maybe we can talk about it for a second. Okay. It's about um, how to figure out what how to, we're being valued with the RCNLD. 
That's a replacement value. Replacement cost new, less depreciation. Correct. I guess. That. But then because of our values went up, yes, everybody has to add an 8% onto it. Yes. And why is that not, can't we get that listed on our property card? I sent in the request and they said they would try and work on that, but they would have to change every town in the state's property record cards to have that same thing. They won't hand change one town. The Massachusetts program is the Massachusetts program. And well, so I mean, they, I thought this was the Tyler. We're working with the Tyler. This is the Tyler, but that's a, where it would show up would be on the back there in the dwelling computations. Yeah. Just above the uh, permits section. Oh, We would want it to show up there as a local factor. Wait a minute, where are you? Oh. I would put it down here in dwelling computations. Oh, okay. Yeah, and call it a dwelling, a Conway factor, something like that. And that would indicate the 8% so that everyone could see it easily. So what about putting it in, uh, what's this percentage good OVR? An override. Well, why isn't it put in there? Because then it wouldn't calculate correctly. It wouldn't? No. Why not? I mean, if you That is override on the percentage good, not on the total replacement cost new. Okay. That's depreciation. Yep. So there's no way to put that in there. Not right yet. But we have sent in the inquiry. I've been sending you copies of. Um, well, there was nothing about that. No, not on that, but there was a couple of months ago. Uh, as I've been sending in requests for problems to Tyler, I've been copying Roxy on it. Mm -hmm. Okay, the auditor, the, the town's audit, and uh, a regular biennial audit is un underway right now. And George Hunt, the auditor, came in yesterday. This is every two years it happens. They need a copy of our latest um, tax recap, which comes right off Gateway. And they need a copy, a copy of the letter stating whether or not we have any um, accounts outstanding at ATB. And so what I wrote was in response to your request, as of January 10th, 2023, the town of Conway has no individual cases at the appellate tax board, but is a party in the class action appeals from all towns by North Star and Verizon. And he said that was quite sufficient. So that's all set for another couple of years. Um, uh, Laurie made extra copies of this. You think you should like to have them for home or office. We do have to send in our budget request quite soon. So uh, I roughed up some figures and the town report also has to be in soon. I called SHI, which is the billing arm of Tyler and our bill for them this past year, for the last couple of years has been 3,775. They're going to be going up to $4,061.41. And we have the Marshall and Swift figure of $674. So our valuation software support is going to be up $1,000 almost from last year. So that figure is an increase. But um, one question is, do we want to change the stipends? We're not voting on this tonight. We're just talking, you know, mentioning it. We never put in for any raises per se because the uh, select board and finance committee determine a cost of living allowance across the board. And we've always accepted that. Does that include stipends? No, I didn't think no, so. No, stipends are exempt from that. That's what I thought. But as far as the hourly rates yep. in the office are concerned. Well, sorry, just to, just to clarify, some do go by it, some don't. I believe the Board of Health um goes up by a cola every year if i'm not mistaken i don't well so. i don't know what it is but the the, yeah. the finance committee comes up with a certain percentage it's going to be 
applied to everyone's hourly rate, right? That's correct. Yeah. So um, like last year we did, we based everything on two, two and a half or 3%. And when we got to the end, then they made the decision. Uh -huh. um, I will say that with the stipends, um, we're not uh, consistent across the board. Um, so I would just encourage you to put in, you know, what you think is fair. You know, whether in the past we've kind of asked for a small increase every five years or so. Yeah. yeah. So we'll figure that one out and see what we'd like to do. Um, Thank you, Barry. Yes. I can give you this copy. These are the amounts that were oh, requested in the that were approved for this current fiscal year. And in the next column, we'll fill in what we're going to be asking for for the next fiscal year. And then at the bottom of that sheet, I add explanatory notes. Did you want to copy this one? No, it's going to be pretty much the same, I assume, except for the. And we, and yeah, I'm going to be able to. Direct, I think. going to be able to pull down postage, but something else goes up. You know, it's try hard to. How many years ago did we did we do this? Right? The what? I'm going to have to look. It's at least four. Okay. All right. Yep. Yep. And our review is scheduled for Tuesday, February twenty first with the finance committee and selectmen. Actually, I do have a worksheet here that I can give each of you. It includes all the information. Just so you all are aware, I also post the complete budget um, online under the town administrator. So anytime anybody wants to check what the budget is, it's up there under the town administrator page right. for all departments. Yeah. Right. So when, when yeah, your Omni budget. <laughs> we have to have it ready to present to the finance committee by the 21st of February. Right. But the drafts are due to Veronique by Friday. Yes, Ooh. by this Friday. Ooh. So actually, probably we should look at this. Can you wait till next Thursday, Veronique? No, she cannot. Okay. <laughs> so we have to really discuss it. All right. You're welcome. Look at it. <laughs> <laughs> the column in the far right. Uh, the two columns prior to that show you 23, how much was approved and how much has been spent to date as of December 31st. Uh, we're just about right on the button except for a couple of categories. Um, now the software maintenance and support needs to be written in as 4,000. Was that 40, 61? I think that's what you said. Right. Stipends, but going back to 19, it was still the same stipend that we get now. I'd have to look at 18. The uh, others, as I say, we don't ask for nope. uh, anything. I would, $75 should be able to cover our mileage again. We have the figure in for cartographic for tax net maintenance. Although I will check with them to see if that's going to increase. So I see it, this call up for site visits. Yes. Where? In case we need to hire someone else or to pay one of us uh, to go out on site visits that are not included in our stipend. Oh, okay. There's money there. How do you determine that? I mean, our stipend is well. Our stipend covers office uh, covers meetings, yeah, and education programs that we attend. With the time we put into that, and new growth visits. Okay. Yeah. Postage, I think I'm reduced to five hundred. You're brave. I know. How come you reduced it that much? Because we're <clears throat> we're getting a good batch this year, and I maybe I'm overestimating a little bit. We have our big mailings coming up. Yes, you do. 
we have our chapter and our, um, you know, all the fall mailings, abatements and exemptions and all of that, and trying to make sure I have enough. So you're going to reduce it? <laughs> yeah, because I think I'll be able to buy enough with this year's money to carry some over. I know Mike says you're not supposed to spend money in a different year, but postage you, is a tough one. Postage is a tough one. You have to have some sitting around. Not a ton of it, no, but you have to have a reasonable amount to keep your business, your office going. Well, um, especially if we're, we decide if we're going to send out copies if we change anybody's property card, mm -hmm. we're going to yes, send that's going to eat a lot. That's of going postage. to eat a lot of postage. Yes, yes, it is, and I'm not using mine for that. Right? No, <laughs> no. So, the occasional thing is okay, but well, maybe right. you shouldn't lower that. Well, maybe we could consider a different figure then. What is it now? Right, it's now it's sixty cents an ounce with an additional twenty four cents. We will not mail more than three pages. Four, four pages. Four, four pages. You can get four. You can get four if you don't okay. have a return envelope. Okay. So we can keep it at that. So maybe let's see, six hundred plus some twenty four cent additional ounce. That additional one ounce is twenty four cents. Yep. <sighs> yes, because most of my mail is two ounces. Yeah. So I'm very used to that. Right. Let's see. Okay, so that would be okay. If I bought a thousand of the sixties and five hundred of the twenty fours, that's seven twenty. And it's a thousand now. It's eleven hundred right now. Yes. So seven fifty would probably. Yeah, but we may have had to borrow a little bit out of that account for one of those other expense accounts. Seven fifty yeah. probably is a a reasonable figure there. What do you think? Seven fifty. That would allow for a thousand. It's like the one thing I never go down on is the postage because right. you it's just a thousand don't... one ounce uh, one, one like, ounce. I thought of going down on the postage for and, the elections and then got um, hit with vote by mail. And if I had, I wouldn't have had enough to cover it. 50. And at the extra in uh, the additional ounce. And these are forever stamps. Mm -hmm. That's fine. I mean, I haven't done postage on, in the past year, so I really don't know what you kind of have to do. Yeah. No. I vote for 800. 800? Okay, well, you're doing it all. I'm not saying anything. I use about three, it keeps going up every time. I use about three thousand a year. So between my between the elections and the town clerk and the registrars and the board of health, I go through about three thousand a year. It's Should we leave it insane? And why is that? Well, I don't think if you win a thousand, it's going to kill anybody. Okay, <laughs> that works by me. I just do try to be as as. No, you don't set yourself short. That's right. That's absolutely yeah. right. If you look at the next line, dues and subscriptions, um, we ended up having to pay out Massachusetts MAO dues. And so our dues and subscriptions went from way overspent the approved $250 and ended up at $600 that we've already spent from it. So that line, it happens to be overdrawn, which is... Uh, Okay, because all the expenses are bunched together in one category for the accounting. So we can borrow from one to fulfill the other, but uh -huh. uh, for that one, I had penciled in what? 750, 700? 750. 750. Mm -hmm. uh, I think at least 650 is require the MAO information that they send out is invaluable. And they also represent appraisers in the legislature very strongly. I mean, assessors, I should say. I'd like to go at least 600 on that one. Why don't you leave it at the 750? Well, All right. You, you use 605. Yes, already in a half year. But yeah, so. Oh, good. He's in the rest of the night. 
Thank you. Yep. I wish people would stop. Bye. I know. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, the next one, tuition and meetings, is 400. That brings up something we have right here. There's a course coming up with webinars uh, through LL Data Designs, which is a, is a company who you use. Yes, it's a, it, it's a the, yeah, um, for my Excel. databases. Right, and they're offering some advanced courses in Excel. And, and what is the course? I didn't quite. It's it's uh, many, various. Many of them. There are many. Yeah, advanced. There's many courses. Advanced work. <laughs> oh, programs in Excel. And I, it, they're only twenty five dollars each. Mm -hmm. And I think I crossed off seven. Twenty-two. Oh no, five. And Lisa's fantastic. The instructor five. is great. Yeah, there are five I'd like to take. I already know Excel very well, but those are features I don't know and probably would use. Oh, so five times twenty-five is one hundred. That's one hundred twenty-five dollars. <laughs> We'll be using out of that. That's and good. so I'd like to continue that at 400. Good. And office supplies. Well, what, what about um, some of those DSL? Um... Mm -hmm. All of their courses. Yeah, they're all yeah. free. No, there was one that we were having to pay $25. Well, that was an in-person one, wasn't it? That was the one? Wasn't, was that one in person? Yeah. Oh, okay. That doesn't happen that often. Right. They're usually webinars and they're usually free. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I was just, no, yeah. I was just yeah. saying. Yeah. And that would come out of this category. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Next line is office supplies. Um, you're cutting it really tight this year. A thousand is really tight. You're cutting it very tight and you're, you're actually because not having enough. Enough. I, the toner for the color copier is now up over $400 a set. Now, I go through a set in about, usually with a little luck, a year and a half. But it's coming up on time right away. Um, well, shouldn't that increase? Well, I'd like to certainly not have it go down any. You really need to well, last two years, you used 1425 Right. Mm -hmm. Going down to a thousand. I don't well, know. No, we have that approved. Doesn't uh, make sense, does it? To go down for less than what you use. <laughs> I know government works in their odd ways, but uh... I mean, the thing is, Lee, if if you you ask for what you think you're going to use and a little bit of padding, and you know what you don't use, it's going to get. Swept it, into free, to free cash. it goes back to free yes. cash and it gets used for something that the town needs. Yes. It's not like it just disappears. That's true. Well, it's true. And I would also say that, um, especially for the first budget request that's put forward, make sure you include what you feel you need because we can't, we're not going to go up from there. The only place we'd be going right. would be down. down. So, yeah. 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 Down. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, the thing is, is that especially with office supplies and with the postage, that just keeps going up. I mean, every, exactly. The postage keeps going up every few months. They keep increasing the postage. Paper. The office supplies are skyrocketing. Yes. yes. I mean, Paper the two drawer file crazy. cabinet that I paid 154 a year ago is now $275. Yeah. I so it's be cutting back on $1,500. All right. You know, it, it's, how do you feel about that, Roxy? She's used fourteen twenty-five. Yeah. I mean, it's All right. asking for what you average. Well, okay. Um, equipment repair. And so we'll just, well, actually, not like fifteen hundred. If I'm reading this right, it's no. The the fourteen twenty-five was what we had budgeted. Right, and you right. want to use one seventy-five. But that's we still have how many months? Six, seven months to the year left. No, we've only used three months. Six this year. That, that was a prior year. The prior year, yeah. How did yeah. you manage that one? You yeah. didn't. How did that happen? She didn't buy anything that year. We were using up old stuff. Oh, oh. we did a big clean out. Yeah, but I, yeah, but I did a huge clean out, and there was like, okay, I ended up with tons of file folders and paper clips and staples and paper and okay. this and that. Wait a minute. Somebody could look at this and question that because, okay. In 19, year 2019, you budgeted 1100, let's say, and you only used 780. Mm -hmm. The next year, you budgeted 2100 and you only used 1000. Right. The next year, you budgeted 1400 and you right. only used 11. 
That does seem very odd to me. Yeah, and then I wonder if something wasn't put in the wrong column. In yeah, the well, project. I wasn't here then, so I can't take. And then that. for 2022, mm -hmm. we budgeted 1,400, and you only used the 175. Yeah, right. that that's where we did the huge cleanout, and I got all yeah. that stuff. Yeah, well, but that was then a good you year. You did a thousand, and then you. We've only used 286 so, so far in the half year. Okay. So I'm just saying somebody could look at this and question. Yes, yeah. What's going on. Of course, but. Yeah, I'm going to look back in that 21 because I know yeah. we used more than $11. I think something must have been I put think, in the. Another no, column. I think you have a typo Possibly. in that column and it's supposed to be $1,100. I don't know. We'll find out. Okay, equipment repair includes the maintenance contract on the Kyocera copier, which we maintain. Uh, and that's $535 a year. And we've already paid it for this year. And we have $215 left in case we have any other equipment repairs needed. Nothing, no red flags waving yet in that category. No. No. And valuation software support is Tyler plus Marshall and Swift. Well, that's going to go up. Right. right, that's going to be four thousand and sixty-one dollars minimum. Yep. The website maintenance, Cartographic has already told us it's going to be twenty-nine hundred dollars. Oh, but then you were talking about hiring someone to work on that. I, so, yes, the possibility of segmenting that off as its own little department. Right, but that doesn't come out of this budget. That's a, that would be a cap, at, that at would be moment, a capital expense or cost. At the moment, oh, it's okay. still here in our budget. Oh, until more can be done, or it decided if that's worth doing or not. Right. Right. Yep. Yep. And then, of course, our usual five thousand dollars toward valuation. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Um, and I'll finish up the notes down below before I turn it in. And so I do have a question. I don't yeah. know if you want to talk about this, but has it to we, do with budget? No, evaluations. I'm just looking. Okay, at evaluations. Okay, so how, um, what is our new valuation? Our, or what are we doing? Our new recertification? Well, or we we re, we re, we revalue every year. Right. That's just your yes, to keep up. Yes. Isn't there a three year? No, it's now five years. Okay. For recertification. And ours will be in 2027. Oh, okay. Yep, 2027. Okay. But each year now we have to have valuations of the telecommunications. Mm -hmm. And if there's any change in the hydro plant, and uh, I think we're pretty solid on the solar array, but there are things that come up every year. Yeah. So that shouldn't be called revaluation. Actually, the name should be changed to valuations, I think. Although it's clearer to the public as revaluation. Right. Well, talk about that. That's what I would. Um... Yeah, because that is a separate account. So, our five-year valuation was done in twenty-two. Yes. That was our last recertification. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, I'll fill in those figures and submit this to Veronique, and if we come up with anything significantly different, we can send a little note, <laughs> she said, hopefully. Um, <laughs> while you're on the budget, did you want to bring up what we have learned and are oh. talking about doing for the office? Yes. Now, basically, there Please. has been an onslaught of people calling themselves the first amenders, amenders. They have been traveling through city halls, through town halls for the past couple of years and video, videoing people who work in public offices and things in their offices, on their desks, blah, 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 pu pushing into private areas and causing a whole huge mess. 
Um, the MMA yesterday had a webinar and has pushed, well, has it was, it was very eye-opening. Oh gosh. It really was very eye-opening, especially for an office like ours. We're not like a city where you walk in and you have a counter and all their desks are way over there. Right. You walk into our office and you're in our office, you're right. in our space, you're in you our look stuff. Down, you might see what we're working on. And the point of that is that if one of these first, one of these first amendment people come in, if they can glance at your desk and see a piece of paper, that means they can record that piece of paper and publish it. Yes. Yes, because it's visible to them at that moment. And it doesn't matter what it is, if it's visible to them at that moment. So they can do this. And, and some of the so there's been a real pickup in their activities. Yes, and they slam. What is the point? Of they this? just to make they they <laughs> yeah, to cause trouble. Is they this, are acting on the belief that they are protecting citizens the, against the big bad municipal workers. Right. Protecting the right, public's right to know. Yes, they slammed Amherst not that long ago and, and just really it was bad. And their goal is to anger you and to get you defensive and to get you upset and to and to public post this all over social media. Yep. Um their suggestion is to very strongly delineate public and private space in your office. Yep. Very strongly delineated. So where we're working toward is ordering a setup like I have for Lee, the exact same desk, same setup, and setting it alongside and over a little bit. So, and then- it will, be, it will be replacing the area we have now and we'll be moving the table. Uh, right. More central location. And then cordoning off so people coming in the door can do a straight shot down. Yep. They can right down. And either off, stand right at the, the front of my desk, stand at the counter on Lee's desk, right. but they cannot get behind the desk or next to the desk or see the computer or see any of the papers on it. And it's strongly delineating where they can go. Example, I had someone come in today and she walked in the door and just walked right behind my desk and stood next to me and said, I'd like to look at something. It's like, hey, yeah. <laughs> you can't do that because there's no delineation. Yeah. And so our and it's it's a little expensive. Veronique has offered to sweep some money from the town administrator budget to supplement what is in yeah. the assessor's budget and supplies I right now. Find maybe maybe 500 and what we have in our budget right now. I'm not sure yet. Do you have an idea what it's gonna cost? It will cost right around $1,500 to for an identical setup. Um, I think the town administrator is sweeping in the majority of it. If she doesn't have enough, I have offered to, it'll have to, the finance committee will have to approve it, but I have offered to sweep money out of my budget over yeah, to the assessors yeah. to supplement the cost of it. Which is very, 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 very <laughs> it's it really yeah. is a security necessity. Yeah. It really is. As it stands now, it's just it's too wide open. And to remember, for me, I have to remember when anyone walks in the door that isn't a town employee or volunteer, I have to shut off my monitors. I have to make sure my papers are upside yep. down or I have something on top of my papers. And to do that every time someone comes in the door is really big. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and there were times, there were, it was happening all over New England a couple of years ago. It's happening all over the country. And yes, but New England was having its own share. We weren't neglected in any way. And there were uh, video. Google uh, First I'm Amendment. Just, I'm just first, I'm just per, first. Here. Can, you turn, can you turn so your computer isn't. It's not my screen that's the problem. Oh, what is it? It's items on my desk. I mean, for my, for my computer screens, they have what's called privacy screens and yes. they snap right on the front and you can't see what's on the screen unless you're here. Anyone standing to the side or more than a few feet back cannot see it. Okay. I will be so doing that myself yep. for sure. Um, because standing at my desk, if you have really good vision, you could probably squint and see what was on my screen. Mm -hmm. You know, why mm -hmm. I... Turn them off. And they're doing it in, in teams of three or four, and one would have a microphone, and there'd be one with a TV camera or a or a video phone. camera, a big, big video, professional video camera on her shoulder, and this one would try and get someone engaged in conversation, and that's fine. And meanwhile, <laughs> this one is is pushing, physically pushing, 
their way in to the desk area and walking around from one desk to the next, seeing what's there and recording it and zooming to other desks. This yes. is this is and something dangerous stuff. And, and something else community. they brought up if if it was a situation where the First Amendment people were in the office and we said, no, you cannot pass this point past here as employees only. But then Ed from next door came over and said, Lee, can I talk to you about my property card for a minute? Sure, Ed, come on and sit down here at my desk. Boom, that opens the door for the First Amendment people to come right to your desk. Yep. Because you let- I'm not gonna be able to do that anymore. Oh, so no one can do that? I won't be able you to are anybody into my You're desk. You're <laughs> A resident of Conway can't be, sit at your desk. I no, she can sit at the them. table with them with paperwork yeah. and discuss that with them. I'll be able to go to the conference table. But yeah. I mean, by rights, they shouldn't be sitting at the desk well, anyway. Just because I, it's the way it's always been. Well, no, we but, sit at the computer. Yeah, yeah, that's right, at my desk. Yeah, right. And I enjoy that. I I love being able to invite people. Come on, step over. Let's but doing talk that opens so the look at it. But I doing it for do that anymore because that right. opens up my the whole entire desk area as a public space. Okay. Yes. Once you yeah. do that for a non-employee, even if it's a volunteer for a committee, is still considered an employee. I feel very um, badly about yes, that. Yes. Go ahead. Sorry, I was just uh, going to say. I think we're going to have to have a, a townwide conversation about this. Yes. And how how to make it so that people understand that we're not trying to keep them away we're just trying to protect um yes. and you know you, yeah private and 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 Lori's absolutely right the problem is that if you do let one person anybody can then come into your space so we have to have that discussion about what spaces should be employees only and what space should be the public and see how we can set that up i mean the town offices you look at at our treasurer and collector and oh, it's terrible hallway there cannot be a private space in there under these yeah. definitions. Exactly. It all has to be public, which means somebody can step around and lean over their shoulder. Right, which it was for me when I used to sit right. in the kitchen. And, and <laughs> see exactly what they're working on and who's there for. The collector there, they have a the little half wall there they can shop. They do, but it's it doesn't have a lock. It oh, does so anyway, talking about getting lock right lock. And we're yeah, also talking about... So, so, and I haven't, you know, th this is kind of jumping the gun because I haven't even talked to the select board about this yet because Lori and I only just attended this, what, two days ago, yesterday? Yesterday. 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 <laughs> yesterday, yeah. but it was an, it was an eye opener. It was, it was, it was a huge eye opener. And, you know, so we, we do need, I think, to have the discussion. I think it'd be nice to have it in public at a select board meeting to talk right. about the public versus private spaces and how we want to move forward. But I completely support the idea of protecting well, be, the workers. Yeah. <laughs> being a small town, I love the idea of being being able to let most people come. Hey, come, come, sit here, and we'll talk. Yeah. But again, you know, it never dawned on me that any Joe Schmo from anywhere mm -hmm. could now do the same thing. Right. Without, you know, without an invitation. Invited. Right. I, I opened it up and I made it public. I mean, we we certainly are well aware of First Amendment rights. And there is very little in our work and office that is not public record. But there is in mine. That's right. There is some in ours. And there's some that should be by specific request only. Uh, but it has to be made available if it's public record. But like we say about not having the owner's names and mailing addresses on the website, we do not have to take information out and hand it out to every car going by, you know, for the world to see. Ask, absolutely. This public record, of course, will tell you. But this is an important feature. It is one of the things that I found most disturbing um, was, you know, because a lot of us like to have family pictures around. That's and if, right. they're, if they're in you your know, space, then people can zoom in on them and post them on social media all over the place. So it, it really does make it distressing. When I worked in the law office, my daughter came in one day and she said to her boyfriend who was with her, look, my mother has pictures of her pets all over the office, but she has no pictures of her children or grandchildren. And it's like, and that is for a reason. <laughs> yeah. Because, yeah. you know, that is for, I don't care if someone knows what my dog looks like. I do care if people I don't know, know who my children and grandchildren are. Yeah. 
And it's distressing to get to this point, but unfortunately, it's, I think it's time we have to really face it. So it's so where the world you. is now. Yeah. So yeah. basically the whole point of this was, it is going to be a larger purchase out of the current office supplies budget. Oh. And so it needs to be okayed by you guys before we go ahead and we start sweeping additional money from other accounts to supplement it. Don't it's not out of it's out of this current year that we're right. in now. We'll bring it forward when the time comes. Um, oh, so there's other work that needs to be done we're first. Not, we're not not yes. voting on the amount. No, we're not asking for additional money. It's out of what we have in the current oh, budget okay. this year. Okay, I gotcha. And, Correct. Uh, and if, if there's enough between the assessor's current budget and the town administrator's current budget, then we don't have to go to the finance committee. I just haven't had a chance to check my budget to make sure that I can cover it, you know, safely. Oh, yeah. you know. Well, so, me either. We're well, not rushing well, because we have to blueprint our office and try, because we have so much in this small space to try and reconfigure that it's not going to be easy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Need an architect in here. <laughs> yeah. But at least you'll be able to take your papers and go sit at your conference table with people when they yes. come in. Yes, so that will be, continue to be a good friendly thing. Right, and in my office, I won't be able to make it unless we put up a some kind of barrier between Adams and my desk, they're gonna still be able to come back around if they want, you know? Well, so you know, very, a long time ago, Tom had thought about putting in a half door there, just like there's a half door for the treasurers, putting in a Dutch door. Mm -hmm. So he could open the top half and have that counter for people for yeah. just that reason yeah so it's an option it is an yeah. option it's true but it's something we'll be hearing about more and there will be a that will be terrific if there's a, a good program on it yeah if um i, I mean i believe on the mma website there will be a link to the webinar if they've already sent it out to us oh have they okay see how much i paid attention to that they, they sent so, it out to us today so I'll, I'll be sending it out to all you know, the select board and everybody just so they're aware and right. And if Roxanne, you want to watch the webinar, I'm more than happy to forward you the link. It's probably about an hour and a half long. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. But it, it it's, you know. Yeah. I had not heard of that before. Oh yeah. They've been around for a while. You can just Google. Yeah. I had not heard of it either. And so I was kind of floored to be honest with you when I saw what they were doing. And you know, because I think I knew because town clerks are the ones that are getting attacked. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they were going into all the offices in the town hall. Everyone they could get into. I mean, I think people in the offices were calling their security people and calling the police in order to get protection from them. From yeah. this, because there was, and this happened in Amherst, did you say? Oh yeah, they did a job on Amherst. Yeah. They really did. They they posted slow mo video that made it look like the employees were getting physically aggressive with them, and it was just. And Lori, they weren't even from Massachusetts, right? Wasn't it somebody from New Hampshire? I believe so. I believe so. Yeah. 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 Yep. So it's. Uh, so tell me what this list is. This is the list of properties that we need to review for new growth. Okay. I just got to write this on here. Okay. So, yeah. Um, and what were these that you gave me? All these. I want to make sure I know what I'm doing here. Are the ones? Are those the ones you asked for when you were here Monday? That what, you would ask for a bunch on Monday? No, no, no. no. Okay, these are the ones that we had thought we were going to get out to in, in this, the end of December. Oh, so this would be considered the new growth? Yes. Okay, yeah. Just want to make sure yeah. I know what I'm looking at. Yeah, I prepared the data to go out. That's the little packet I prepare for each one. Okay, and, yeah. and what was the here? This is another home group that you gave me. But I'm not sure what this is. Okay. Is that well? This more? is our dummy sheet, our dummy property record card. Okay. To go with the informational paragraphs. Oh, so this okay. is what you're doing. Up. Wait a yeah, I'm gonna be using that property record card, but cutting it up into into pieces so that one is only looking at one particular category at once. And. Okay. Uh, we do have a couple of guests, so we are we ready to oh, open for public comments I and you have something to say? I beg your pardon. <laughs> yes, that's true. <laughs> Welcome guests. Um, we have Katie and Sarah that have been here for a while. Um, I think they're still there. They, I mean, they're still here. I don't know if they're still in front of their computers, but 
if we're all, if we're done yes, with everything yes. else, if, if Katie or Sarah have anything to say or any questions, any comments, now would be a good time. Oh, this is just people zooming. Yeah, yeah people who in. people who zoomed in. Oh, but I guess they're oh. Oh. observing for knowledge and not okay. for participation, which is fine. Okay. Any other ones? No, just Veronique and us. Veronique, how about you? So okay. I have something. Do we want to discuss this or not? It's up to you. Um, well, let's let's add, let Veronique answer the question first. Oh, sorry. Oh no, th no, thank you, but no, I don't have anything in particular. <laughs> okay, thank you, no, Roxy. Because you you were mentioned uh, last week, we were doing abatements, and you had a question as to, and you were going to do some research about the wording as to abatement as um, going into inspecting a house. Mm -hmm. and, and it was written, and I just wondered what do we want to discuss that? Because we had a question on that. Yes, we did. Um, just had it here. Because I think we're going to do more abatement now. Yes. So we should maybe come to a conclusion on that. Um, I do have that left here. We were questioning what the state said about it. About whether or not the interior it, uh, is, it, am I interpreting it? Yes, right? yes, what yes, 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 no. It's an automatic denial if you don't allow an interior visit. Right. Yes. I I will have that shortly. Oh, so yeah. Because okay. I, I printed out something on it and I don't know. What okay, what did you find? Um, Because it was mentioned about, does it have to have detailed information on there? And that is, it does not need to contain detailed information supporting the claim. What? Oh, the it's application for yes. itself. Yes. Yes. It doesn't have to have anything more than, it must be. We got, if, if someone moved. fills in it, enters, if someone fills out an abatement for application, mm -hmm. And simply says over evaluation. Yes. Legally, that is sufficient. Yes. But then we need to know over evaluation of what? Land, buildings, house, barn, whatever. And, you know, we need a little bit more clarification. But we can and ask, so we for, can ask for that. Yes. Yes. Or yes. if they say, oh, wait a minute, I wanted to have them consider mine against the third one down the street, they can, they can add that to it also. Right, but we can't yeah. not do it because they didn't say. That's anything. right. If it's a signed application and entered within the appropriate time, it uh, lives, shall we yes. say. Um, I got something else here. Is that um, I don't know. It says here, so um, the tax investment be agreed by the assessment. The actual tax bill is the bill issued by the tax assessor. Um, In Conway, the actual or final tax bill is the September bill. Yeah. Okay. During revaluation programs, do not okay. Okay, this is what I guess I was writing. The taxpayer who fails to comply with the assessor's request to inspect or provide information loses the right to appeal to the, the assessor's action. action. And that's where I missed the book. What do you mean? If I had known or remembered that, uh, a certain case that went to the appellate tax board could have been saved that trip because an interior inspection was refused. And that could have been substantial enough to lose that property owner the right to go to the ATB. Yes. 
And I guess I didn't print out the exact one I wanted because I might have another page here. I might have another page in there. Oh. Um, yeah, I do have another one. It says actually right on the application because we were deciding whether we can deny it just because they don't let you in the house. But I, it's kind of questionable. We are, it's up to. Okay, I don't it, know. It's, well, I'm going to say it. Read All right, it. You definitely use the right, yeah. I didn't use the right wording there. But it's kind of, oh, wait a minute, text in there. Okay, upon applying for an abatement, you may be asked, it says you may be asked to provide the assessors with written information about your property and permit them to inspect. Mm -hmm. It doesn't say you have to. So it's kind of left open that it's our discretionary decision. We, the assessors may. That's right, may. Ask you for written information. Yes. Or inspect their right. property. It doesn't, but it doesn't say anything about whether or not the property owner uh, has to allow it or whether or not the property owner, uh, the property owner's rights change in any way by not allowing it. That doesn't answer that question. Well, it, okay. Say that again. What that say it says is that the assessors may yeah. ask the property owner for additional information mm -hmm. and or an interior visit. Yes. What it does not say is that it doesn't say what are the obligations of the property owner in response to that, or if the property owner's uh, circumstances change in any way because of their response to that, such as losing their right to go to the ATV if they've not allowed an interior inspection. Sure. Okay. So am I taking it correctly that we don't have to ask for interior inspection? Um, it's our policy to do so. We, I suppose under that it says it may, but I, I think you need to dig a little further into that. Yeah, that's almost a case-by-case well, case situation. So what if you just, okay, I guess what I'm trying to come up with the policy we're going to do. What if it's just outside inspection, though? Does, I'm still working on waiting on that one. Because it seems kind of crazy if we're just questioning the outside, if they have, if we have to permit them in, or we have to be permitted inside to establish uh, correcting information. Mm -hmm. Still waiting on the answer. Yeah. Oh, okay. So I was just wondering because if we go over, I guess we know the one that's up that mm -hmm. we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Um, if we could decide, I was trying to decide that before that came about. Yep. So we don't know that. Don't know that. Okay. Hope to find the answer before 545 next week. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Have we any further business before the board? Uh, I move to adjourn at 725. A uh, second? Yeah. Any discussion, questions? No. All in favor? Aye. 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 We are adjourned. Thank you, everyone.